How to balance combat to promote the fighter's role. Our family game consists of fighter rogue cleric, playing through Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. The characters have reached L4 now. In combat the fighter typically does 1d6 plus 3 bow damage per turn and the dual wielding rogue is doing 1d6 plus 4 plus 2d6 plus 1d4. After a couple of rounds the fighter generally closes to melee range but is still outshone by the rogue's sneak attack. Admittedly the rogue is not sneak attacking every turn, but at least 75% of the time. From player comments, it appears to me the fighter's player is envious of the damage dealing of the rogue. As a new DM I would like to ensure all players enjoy the game and this is an obstacle for me to overcome. I would like to design upcoming encounters that will de-emphasize the rogue as the superstar but not sure what options to consider, and would like some guidance from those who have trod this ground before me. It definitely sounds like you have a player who expects, as a fighter, to excel when it comes to fighting, and for them that means hitting enemies, and doing damage. But the rogue is also very good at that. I would recommend designing encounters that help show the fighter where their strengths lie in combat outside of just dealing damage. Here are a few ideas. If the fighter is using a bow, have some flying enemies out of reach. The rogue can throw daggers but the fighter will have more ammunition and do more damage in such a circumstance. Enemies also using bows would likewise help, especially if shooting from out of dagger range. Have enemies who use magical area attacks requiring a saving throw that favors the fighter strength or constitution, most likely. Even if they fail the save, they should have substantially more hit points and this should highlight for them that they are tougher than their companion. It might even lead to a circumstance where they hold off the enemy while the cleric aids the rogue. Introduce non-combat elements to an encounter that also play to the fighter's strengths. For example, a door that is stuck or barred and must be battered open. It could also be locked, so that the rogue needs to pick the lock first, allowing them to work together, disarm the players and get them into a fistfight. Assuming they have a higher strength, the fighter is going to hit more often and do much more damage than the rogue. I would also recommend checking on some rules to make sure the rogue hasn't been gaining unfair advantage, in this case quite literally. Sneak attack isn't expected to be used. Every turn, its requirements are, from the basic rules. Once per turn, you can deal an extra 1d6 damage to one creature you hit with an attack. If you have advantage on the attack roll. Dot. The attack must use a finesse or a ranged weapon. You don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy of the target is within 5 feet of it. That enemy isn't incapacitated, and you don't have disadvantage on the attack roll. The rogue should not always have advantage, but they might always be attacking the same enemy as the cleric. If this is the case, split them up, introduce more enemies at once, and have them pair up against the adventurers. Or have enemies use effects that grant their attackers disadvantage, which also means sneak attack can't be used. Or have them attacking from range. The intent here isn't to punish the rogue, but to teach them to work a little for it, and give all the characters some opportunities for tactical and narrative decisions in a fight. I'd also look at the fighter's weapon, armor and ability score choices, and help them understand why their damage seems so much lower, and also that they are not meant to be doing the most damage, necessarily. And if weapons or armor are part of the problem, there are lots of places to find better ones, or they could just buy them. Lion Shield Coster stocks all the weapons and armor in the rulebook, if they're based in Phandalin. 1d6 suggests they are using a short sword or mace, but a fighter has no particular reason to stick to such a low damage weapon. Even a long sword does 1d8 one-handed, and can be swung with both hands for 1d10, without giving up any utility over a short sword. If they are focused on dexterity, and thus using finesse weapons, give them the option of a rapier for 1d8, though this might cause some friction with the rogue. If they are using a shortbow at range, a longbow is a good option, the rogue won't be proficient in it, unless they are an elf. Look at the ability score they are most often using for combat, unless you rolled for stats it should hopefully be as high as the rogue's dexterity. The damage numbers you cite suggest they have at best a 17 in their primary combat stat, while the rogue has an 18 or 19, if it isn't, see if there's a way to rejig that, let them change their ability score increase, or feat, choice from level 4, for example. Likewise, look at their armor class, in general a fighter should have much better AC than a rogue, who without magical assistance probably isn't going to have much above 16 AC, especially at level 4, and so even if the rogue hits more often, they should be getting hit more often too. They might want to upgrade their armor, or, if they're trying to stay light on their feet, invest in a shield if they fight one-handed when in range. 
Let them know that while a fighter can be very versatile, their strength is often in specialization. If they are using a bow at range and a standard melee weapon up close, they may be splitting their attacks across two abilities, and one will usually not be as good as the other, or both will be slightly lower if they split their ability score increases between them. Also look at the fighting style they chose, and make sure they are getting the most out of it. Again, let them change it if they don't use it or don't like it. Make sure they know how to use action surge and second wind and add complications to combat that will make those features shine. Hopefully some of these ideas will help, I've found all of these to be sources of confusion or dissatisfaction among new players in combat.